Okay, we're going to work on factoring, factoring polynomials. A couple of review things before we get into what we're really going to be working on today. What we're going to be doing when we're factoring is we're going to be reversing. We're going to be reversing the distributive property. So we'll be, <clears throat> if we were going to multiply these together, you would have y squared minus 2y minus 4y plus 8 and then of course that would end up with y squared minus 6y plus 8. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be given this and we're going to need to go backwards with that so we got to learn those skills. This would be 2x squared plus 6x minus 1x minus 3. Combine those two like terms in the middle. And really it's those middle terms that uh, cause us some stress that we're going to work through. Remember, when you're squaring a binomial, that means you're multiplying it by itself. We will learn a quicker trick for this later. 9x squared minus 3xy minus 3xy plus y squared. And look at that. When you're squaring something, you end up with these two in here. I wonder if that will happen all the time. Spoiler alert, it will. <laughs> and there's my final answer. Now, we start out by just factoring out the greatest common factor. I know there's a couple extra things in your notes that maybe we're uh, going over right now. But all of the stuff that we're going to be doing are in your notes. So just find where we're at. The greatest common factor will be the largest value that, or the largest term that can factor both terms. In this case, I'll take out a 5x. When I remove a 5x from 15x, I'm left with 3. When I remove a 5x from a minus 25x squared, I'm left with minus 5x. And that would be it in this case. You can always check your work by distributing back in 15x minus 25x squared. I'm good. This one's a little bit more difficult. I want to think about 12, 24, and 30. I want to get the largest value that divides all of them. That means the greatest common factor. In this case, I think a 6 is the biggest number that will do all of them. So I'm going to back out a 6. I have an x and an x and an x squared. So I can take out an x. I have a y, a y squared, and a y to the fourth. So I can take out a y. Now I think about what's left. What's left when I divide out? Factoring is like dividing, but we do have to make note of where it is. I'm left with a 2 because 6xy times 2 would be that 12xy. And I divide a 6 out of here and I get a 4 and a y. That's what's left. If I multiplied that bin back in, I'd have my 24xy squared. And then I have a minus. I would have a 5. I would have an x. And I'd have 3 y's. So again, this would be just factoring out the greatest common factor. All of our problems today, you're going to want to check to see if you can take a greatest common factor out. Again, you can distribute back in to check to make sure you end up with what you started with. Uh, let's see, there should be a couple here. Uh, we'll try these guys. This would be a 3 and a y. What am I left with after a 15y loses a 3y? I'm left with a 5. I divide a 3 out, I'm left with 1. We do not have to write that 1 because I have a y cubed. Again, think about foiling this, excuse me, distributing this back in. 15y minus 3y to the fourth. Over here, I don't like a uh, negatives out front, so I'm actually going to take a negative out just for fun. Uh, I'm going to take a negative out. It looks like I got a 4 and an 8 and a 2. I'm going to take a 2 out. I have an a squared, an a, and an a. I'm going to take an a out. We got to take them out of all of them now, so I can't take an a squared out. I got a b, a b squared, and a b. I'm going to take a b out. Now, here we go. I divided the negative out. It'll be positive. I divided a 2 out of the 4, so I'm left with a 2. I took one of these a's out. One of them is left. I took that b out, so I don't have a b anymore. I took out the minus, so I'm going to have a plus. You didn't have to take out the minus. I just chose to because negative signs like negative people. I don't really want them in my life. And then I have a 4. Uh, take that A out. It's gone. Take one of those Bs out. I have a B left. Now, if you're going to pay attention, uh, pay attention right now. I need to take a negative out of here. But then look at the 2 came out, the A came out, and the B came out. 
So some people want to leave this blank. I'm not some people. We need the number one out of there because we really divide it out by itself. Again, I have to have a spot for it. If I was going to multiply back in, there's my minus 4a squared b. There's my minus 8ab squared. And I have to have a spot for my plus 2ab. So please note when you divide something out of itself, you do got to have a place for it. So you have to have that one. All right, so we're gonna, our main focus is gonna be trinomials, which is three terms. We will also deal a little bit with binomials, which is two terms. And when we take out a greatest common factor, we're really talking about a monomial, which is one term. Poly means many, many terms. Nomial is a term, so we have many terms, okay? We'll work with polynomials for a little while here as we continue. Factoring out trinomials when the leading coefficient is one, okay? So now we will have a leading coefficient. So when we remember, when we're talking about trinomials, maybe we're talking about ax squared plus bx plus c. Oh, let me guess, that's on the next thing. Okay, so we need to put our polynomials in order. Uh, usually we like descending order. So I've got this ax squared plus bx plus c. When the leading coefficient is one, we are talking about our value of a being equal to one. When our value of a is equal to one, factoring our trinomials really isn't that difficult if you know basic arithmetic, okay? Um, so I have them squared term, this is x to the first, and this is the constant. Squared term, linear term, constant term. I'm looking for the factors of c, so I have 1x squared plus bx plus c. My factors of 12 that have a sum of 7. Now, some of you are sitting there thinking, I know the answer. It's 3 and 4, and you are correct. Except, let's just make note that uh, factors of 12 are 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4. If the middle term was 13, I would have chosen 1 and 12. If the middle term was 8, I would have chosen 2 and 6. The middle term is 7, so I am choosing 3 and 4. This is my winner. What do we do with the 3 and 4? When the leading coefficient is 1, we're going to break this into two sets of parentheses, okay? And we're going to split our x squared up into x and x, and then we get to go 3 and four. Now, now, where is the, where did the magic come from? Well, let me tell you, if I was to foil this back together, so this is the answer, I'm getting it into what was multiplied together. If I multiply this back together, x squared plus 4x plus 3x plus 12. Now, where did this magic little three and four come from? Holy cow, it came from here. There's my x squared plus 7x plus 12. Again, these are we can just do this quick trick when our lead coefficient is 1, when the value of a is 1. We will have, uh, later in the class today, we'll have when the value of a is not 1. Here we go. See if we can figure these ones out. Factors of 36 with a sum of 15. I do not have to list them every time. If you can figure them out right out of the bat, maybe you grab your calculator, start taking 36 and just start dividing. Nothing wrong with that. I got my one and 36. I got my two and 18. I got my three and 12. I got my four and nine. I got my six and six. Again, we're not doing this every time. This is clearly my winner. There is my sum of 15. Here we go. Break it up. Again, the lead coefficient is one. It breaks into an X and an X and I get a three and a 12. That is my answer. If you're not sure, foil it back together. Oh no, negatives, not that, anything but that. What are we going to do? Let's have a look-see, shall we? Here we go now. I need factors, oh, ignore that, factors of negative 4 with a sum of positive 3. So the only way I can multiply and get a negative is one positive and one negative. If I have to have one positive and one negative, I need the larger value here to be positive. So I'm gonna have negative one and positive four. Notice, I could have positive one and negative four, but then my sum would be negative. So when I'm dealing with a negative on the C, I like to think about subtraction. I know it's gonna be four and one, and then I think about which one is it gonna, be, gonna have to be. The other one would be two and negative two, 
which would give you a sum of zero. This one gives you a sum of three. So we want to use our head a little bit when we break these uh, negative ones up, but you can always just do a list as well. And I'm going to have x minus one and an x plus four. Again, foil it together to check to see what's happening. x squared plus four x minus one x. x squared plus four x minus one x and then minus four. That's the minus plus four and the minus one. And that's where this three x came from. Oh, this is a good time. Oh no, watch out, watch out. Oh no, the lead coefficient is not one. Ah, contraire, mon frere. Take out a three. X squared minus 12X plus 27. Now I'm gonna factor this one. This one comes along for the ride. Comes along for the ride, just like your friend that doesn't have their driver's license. All right, you all know that person. I'm looking for factors of 27 that has a sum of negative 12. Let's think about this a little bit. I have a positive product. The only way I can get a positive product and a negative sum is if I have a negative times a negative. All right, so I'm gonna go with, is it one in 27? That would add up to negative 28. So the only way I could do this is negative 27 and negative one or negative nine and negative three. Obviously that's our winner. We're gonna have a X minus nine and an X minus three. This other three out here does come along for the ride. It was part of the original. I would foil these together, get my X squared minus 12 X plus 27, and then multiply everything times three. Okay, the difference of two squares, notice these are binomials, okay? And um, what does difference need, mean? Difference means subtraction and squares are perfect squares. What are my perfect squares? One, four, nine, 16, uh, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, 100, 121, 144. That's probably far enough. Okay, when you have two terms, you're really doing the same thing, but it's what do you multiply for negative 16 and add for zero? Well, we should be able to come up with multiply for 16 and add for zero. It's positive four and it's negative four. And then we come over here and we say, hey, what do you multiply for negative 81 and add for a zero in the middle term? Well, it's plus nine and minus nine. But now we get down here and it's a little bit more hairy, but you might notice, what are we doing? The difference of two squares, every time you have something squared minus something squared, all you have to do is figure out, what did I square to get the first term? What did I square to get the last term? And then it's a plus or minus. So I come down here and I say, what did I square to get four X squared? A two X. What did I square to get a nine? A three. And we get a plus or minus. Again, check to see, check to see whether or not this foils back together. Four X squared minus six X plus six X minus nine. Look at that, look at that. That goes away and you're left with the four X squared minus nine. Isn't that wonderful? If you stop paying attention, start paying attention again because this one's a humdinger because I can go four X and four X. Don't forget one is a perfect square. What do you square to get one? <laughs> one and I get a plus or minus, but wait. There was a four there, so this actually needs to be four X squared. Holy cow, I almost made my first mistake of the year. Now, if it says factor completely, I'm actually not done. Now, this is two things, but is this a difference? This is important that it's a subtraction, so that one can't go any further. Oh, but look at this one hiding out here. This X squared minus one is a X plus one and an X minus one. And this one, again, like that friend that doesn't pay you for gas, comes along for the ride. Look at that one, it went out further. Ooh, that was a tough one. Always looking for perfect squares. So think about these ones, okay? We should probably know the ones up to 100. You can check them on your calculator if you need to. Your key is gonna be a subtraction because it's a difference and something squared minus something squared. Does not work for a plus, only works for a minus. Again, we need to make sure we're checking. Can I take out a greatest common factor? Always the GCF first. Take out a five X squared minus nine. 
Now I clearly have the difference of two squares. What did I square to get x squared? x. What did I square to get 9? 3. What do I need in the middle? Plus or minus, and we are set. Uh, send it back together in order to check. All right. Um, you do have a sometimes, what do you multiply for 6 and add for 3? Multiply for 6, add for 3, 1 and 6. 2 and 3 adds up to 7, adds up to 5. There isn't anything. Nothing works. We call it a prime polynomial. Remember, a prime number only has factors of 1 in itself. All right. Uh, we're going to skip that one for now. We'll talk about that later. Okay. Now, we're going to do our ax squared plus bx plus c. But now, my coefficient will not be 1. Plot twist. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, turn on your brain. Here we go. The associative property means you're allowed to group addition or group multiplication in any order that you would like. I can do A plus B and then add on C. I can do B plus C and then on A. I get the same answer. Check it with some numbers. Oh, there's numbers over here. That's 9 equals 9 no matter which way you skin that cat. All right. When we group, we're going to take the first two and put them together and we're going to take the second two and put them together. Now I'm going to factor these two independently. I take out an x. I have 2y minus 7. I don't take anything out over here, but I'm going to take out a 1. And even though you're going to look at me kind of weird, I'm going to take out that 1 because now look at these two extra large terms. I have two extra large terms here, and they have this in common. Oh, it's going to work like that every time grouping works, and it's going to work... Um, more often than not, uh, always. And uh, we take a 2y minus 7. I'm taking this whole thing out front, extract it. What am I left with? I'm left with an x. Why did I put it in parentheses? I have no idea. And then, um, oh, oh, I know why I'm putting it in parentheses because I, I, need, to, I need to keep in mind that I'm taking a 2x uh, minus, um, 2y minus 7 out of that other one. Grab me that eraser. Holy cow. I got it. I got it. I almost made my first mistake of the day. And then we take out a 2y minus 7 comes out front here. And look at, look at, think about multiplying this whole 2y minus 7 times that x. It's right there. 2y minus 7 times that 1. It's right there. And now we're done. And it will work itself out like that each and every time. Let's come down here. Let's group that together. When I do have a negative, I do need to include it. And it is a little bit of a pickle there, but we'll be okay. Okay, I'm going to change colors because I got too much green on this, on this screen. Um, so I look here and I take out a 2m and I'm left with k minus 6. And over here, I'm going to take out a negative 7. So whenever there's a negative there, we want to match those two things up. So take out the negative and I'm left with k minus 6. And then you might be asking yourself, hey, is this magic? Oh, no, it's not magic. It's better than magic. It's math. Let's go. And I got a k minus 6 and a k minus 6. So I take out a k minus 6 and I'm left with a 2m minus 7. Foil it back together. You would get exactly what you had up there and we are set. All right, uh, I'm not going to factor these ones by grouping. We're going to get to the big full meal deal here. This is going to be my key. All right, so here I am. AX squared plus BX plus C. Now, in the last one, when this was 1, we just focused on what the value of C was and what the value of B was. That's going to be different now. Now I have to take A times C. That's 50 for 27. And some of you are sitting in your chairs thinking, what do you multiply for 50 and add for 27? I know that right off the top of my head because I'm good at multiplication. 2 and 25. Okay. Notice I could have 1 and 50, 5 and 10. I think that's about it. For uh, So if the middle term was 51, we'd choose this one. 15, we'd choose that one. This is my winner. Here's the big thing. I've got this 5x squared plus 27x plus 10. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to change the 27x, this is the big, this is the move, into 2x plus 25x. Did the 27x go anywhere? No. Where did it go? It got split into 2x and 25x. 
All right, here's the move. That's the move. You figure out what makes that middle term go. And now we group and we gr group. Whoops. And now we factor these by grouping. Where did the 27x go? It's right here. It put on a disguise. It's Halloween. Okay, I take out an x. I have 5x plus 2. Now watch this beautiful thing work. What could I take out of a 25x and a 10? I take out a 5 and I have a 5x plus 2. And isn't it beautiful? Because you might want to be thinking, it's like magical that that 5x plus 2 uh, shows up in both those terms. Because now I can remove a 5x plus 2 from this first extra large term. This extra large term, I took the 5x plus 2 out, I'm left with an x. This extra large term, I took a 5x plus 2 out, I'm left with a plus 5. And just like that, the heavens open up and we say, oh, there it is. Whoa, 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 whoa. There it is. There it is. All right. Why is that thing on there forever? I don't know what happened here. I'm going to need to erase some stuff. Sorry about that. I haven't done this. In okay, we're set. All right, we're set. Let's go back to, uh, let's go to blue on the next one. All right, let's see what happens here. Again, uh, oh, ah, you got to change this problem. I think I have the signs wrong in your notes. I don't, I have no idea why I haven't changed that yet. So please write 27x squared minus 11x minus 30. Sorry about that. Here we go. Now we got a negative though, okay? So we got we to gotta do some negative work here. Negative 60 for negative 11. And I'm going to use grouping again. So I'm going to go, I'm going to split my negative 11 into what my two winning values are. Pro tip, if you get a negative, put it first. All right, so let's figure out what this is. I'm really looking for subtraction because one's got to be positive and one's got to be negative. One and 60, two and 30, three and 20, four and 15, <gasps> four and 15. So a lot of people like to do that on their calculator. Notice the 15 needs to be negative. The four needs to be positive. If you don't know where I got those factors, start listing the factors of 60 and figure out which ones have a subtraction. Grab your calculator if you're bad at math. Okay, six and 10. Is that it? I, I, I think that's it. Um, so it's negative 15 and four add up to negative 11. Again, where does the negative 11x go? It doesn't go anywhere. I'm gonna have a minus 15x. Pro tip, if you have a negative, list it first. It'll just make your life a little bit easier. And I know you don't think so, but I am here to make your life easier. So here's the negative 11x. Here's the negative 11x. Don't be alarmed. There's nothing to be alarmed about. I grab my trusty calculator and I go x. And I go 2x minus 15. And what can I take out of these two? I can take out a 2. And what am I left with? 2x minus 15. And isn't it just wonderful? They both now have a 2x minus 15. And I pull that out front. I pull that out front. What's left? x. What's left? Two. Ho! Oh, there it is. Whoop! There it is. If you want to check your work, you you uh, you expand that back out, and you will get what we started with. Where did the minus eleven x go? Didn't go anywhere. It's right here. That's the whole point. Right over there. All right. A couple more here. A uh, couple more. Uh, this is a thirty for a seventeen. That one's pretty quick. It would be 2 and 15. So what are we going to do? We're going to do 6x squared plus 2x plus 15x plus 5. And then you're going to group. You're going to group them, right? You're going you're gonna to group. We're going to group. And we're going to group. And this is the key. Where did the 17x go? It didn't go anywhere. It's right here. But now I, I know I can pull this apart. Ah, I hate that. And I get 3x plus 1, and I pull a 5 out, and I get 3x plus 1. And you say, it's almost magic. It's not magic. It's math. Better than magic. 3x plus 1. I pull that out of both of them. What's left? 2x. What's left? 5. All right. Let's see what we got left. I don't think we need to do very many more. Ooh, that looks like a fun one. Ooh, a bunch of those look fun. Um, we're going to leave those. 
Let's go back to this one because, again, we have a minus in the middle. Oh, and this is 72. And there are so many factors of 72 with an add to negative 22. Pro tip, if you're multiplying for a positive, it's either a positive times a positive or a negative times a negative. In this case, it's got to be a negative times a negative. Grab your calculator, 72, so many factors. 1 and 72, 2 and 36, 3 and 24, um, 4 and 18, um, 6 and 12. Um, boy, my brain's hurting. 8 and 9, and we made it. Okay, which of these adds to positive 22? Oh, right here. Well, then what do I need? I need a negative 4 and a negative 18. So I kind of work off the positives on this one. So now I've got both negatives. Pro tip, again, pay attention. I'm a professional. 24x squared minus 4x. I told you if you had one negative li listed first. You have two negatives, leave a little space here. Leave a blank space, baby. So you can write a plus sign. <laughs> I bet you said you were going to write your name. Okay, and we group and we group, but we change that into a plus a negative because that negative has to be connected with the 18. Now I take out a 4x and I'm left with 6x minus 1. I take out a minus 3. I'm left with 6x minus 1. I take out a 6x minus 1 and I have 4x minus 3 and that is my jam. Okay, here's what we're going to do. You're going to do, uh, well, that one's prime. That's fine. We'll, no big deal. Um, you're going to do the factoring worksheet. It's three pages. I'm going to have you do the odds only. I'm going to have you do the odds only right now uh, because uh, you're going to do, you're going to do, um, we'll do some of the evens together in class when I make it back. Have a wonderful day and work hard.